right. All right. Today is the only day this weekend I can help Evan. And I said I'm not helping him work on a tractor. So, sorry, he'll have to do that by himself. So today, <laughs> we are working on a brooder for in the barn for meat chickens. That's the main purpose, right? Right, so uh, behind me, back behind me, us over here, uh, this is the next area that we could build like a livestock stall. And instead of basically making a, a stall like we have in the other ones, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of fence it in like the chicken coop and turn it into a brooder. And it'll be for, we can do meat chickens, we can do um, future laying chickens when they're babies. Turkeys. And we can do turkeys or any other kind of birds that we want to raise in there. But I think we're going to build it strong enough that we could use it for her goats if we need to as well. Yes, because we're hoping to have baby goats in the spring. Um, maybe in the fall. <laughs> yep. So we need a, enough area in here to have a few mama goats birthing babies. So... Yeah, this year we're only going to probably have one goat that's going to birth babies, but our other two girl goats will be old enough next year that uh, that they'll be able to be bred, and we'll end up having three goats eventually in like a year, so we'll have three goats that'll be having babies at the same time, so it'll be good to have three different stalls for them. Yes. So, so anyway, that's what we're doing today, is we're going to... This next area in the barn, we're going to turn that into a brooder area slash kind of an extra stall. So. Let's go ahead and get started.
we're back out in the barn today. Uh, going to be working again on the brooder area that we're making. And um, it's been about a week since we've been out here. So we're kind of hoping to finish this up today. So we're going to coat the walls today with some hardware cloth. That is like a really tight um, fencing. It's, it's better than chicken wire. It keeps predators out a lot better. So we're going to get that, uh, that wire fencing on the brooder. And then we've got a door that we need to make. And then we're also going to be adding an outlet to the, the center of the stall here. And then uh, a hook so we can hang from a chain like a heat lamp and be able to keep uh, any baby chick, you know, any baby chickens or birds or anything that we keep in there. You got to keep a heat lamp on them until they're a certain age so that they'd stay nice and warm. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Hopefully finish this up. So I'm getting ready to put the door together for the brooder. And this time I'm gonna try using a Craig jig. I got one for Christmas and I ain't tried it out yet. So I'm gonna use that to kind of, you know, drill my guide holes out. And I'll probably end up drilling it actually from both sides of the board to try to make it stronger. But uh, I don't know, we're gonna try it out and see if it works. Well, it's day three now here working on the brooder here in the barn and uh, so we got the door put together and we used that Craig jig to assemble it and uh, got all the, the hardware cloth on the door and got it hung. Now when I put it together it wasn't exactly square so when you measure corner to corner it ended up being like a half of an inch out so it was pretty close to square but not perfect. Um, it did still hang in the door opening and fit fine. So I don't know if the Craig jig was exactly the right way to do it, but it seems it seems to be holding the door together okay. Now originally I did think about putting like cross bra like angle braces in each one of the corners, and maybe if I would have put some angle braces in there and maybe made sure everything was a little bit more square before I screwed it together, maybe it would have turned out a little bit better. But um, 
I think it'll do fine for, for a brooder or a small stall here in the barn. So we didn't get as much done yesterday as I hoped to because we ended up running out of the little staples. And we got these really little staples that we hammer in to hold in that hardware cloth. And I just, I really hate those staples, to be honest with you. They are little finger smashing little staples. And I don't know what the real good, um, a good fastener is for hardware cloth. So let me show you the different types of staples and why we use the ones we do. So these here are three quarter inch uh, poultry net staples and that's what we're using. And you can see, if I can pick one of these up, you can see that you can't hold very much of it without hitting your finger with a hammer. So these are just a pain to work with. Now the next size up is an inch and a quarter staple and you can see the huge size difference. Um, of course these would be easier to hammer but these almost feel like they're way too big for the poultry netting. And I guess the other choice would be just like a regular stapler like this. And you can see those are pretty tiny and I'm not sure that they would hold the netting really well. You'd have to use a lot of them, I would think. So I'm not really sure what the right choice is for hardware cloth, but we've been using these little staples and they're just kind of a pain in the butt to use, but they do hold the hardware cloth well. So if you guys got any suggestions on what you use to hold the hardware cloth on your chicken coop, let me know. So this summer, we're planning on getting a batch of Cornish cross chickens, which is a meat chicken. So um, that's why we're building this brooder, because it'll be part of the process of raising those chickens. We'll have to keep them in here and warm under heat lamps for uh, several weeks until they're big enough to go out to the pasture. So today we're going to be getting an outlet installed on the ceiling and a couple hooks on there so you can hang your heat lamps down to uh, keep the chickens warm. And also we're going to be trying to close up any gaps that are left in this brooder area because you don't want an area where a mink, which can actually fit through about an inch square hole, they can fit in a really tight spot or maybe even a coon to get in and kill the baby chicks. So if you look up here, I've got some openings from the floor joists up above. And uh, on the chicken coop, we ended up put boards in there and, and just kind of stapled the hardware cloth, but that was a lot of trouble. So I think I'm just going to cut some scrap lumber and I'm just going to fill up all these gaps with some scrap lumber, make sure everything's nice and tight, and then we'll be done. Well, I think that wraps up making a brooder here in the barn. So it is that kind, that time of season where a lot of people will start, the baby chickens will start showing up in the uh, farm stores here soon. People will be buying baby chicks. 
Uh, last year, Rebecca, I think she ended up buying like 18 or 24 baby chickens. And she just kind of went overboard with, <laughs> at least that's my opinion. And um, so we are down to 19. 19 chickens now. So that is way more chickens than a couple of people need. Probably you only need probably two chickens per person. So four people, four chickens. Ugh, can't talk. Four chickens would be probably plenty for me and Rebecca. But we end up sharing our all of our eggs with our family and giving those away to family and friends. But um, So we should not be buying baby chickens this year. Hint. Hint. But maybe meat chickens. Yeah, we're going to get some, yeah, meat chickens, maybe some turkeys or something. But anyway, I'm trying to hint at Rebecca. Don't go buy a bunch of baby chickens. <laughs> That's why I bought so many. Yeah, so she bought all these rare breeds that do dark brown eggs and green eggs and yep. everything. And uh, so anyway, I think the brooder turned out fairly well. Um, it's all set up now. Of course, we got she just swept it out. But we got our we've got our outlet in here, and I ended up placing a hook here and a hook here, about a foot away from the outlet. So we should be able to dangle down a chain and uh, heat this area up and keep the the baby chickens you know keep them warm so we did kind of some of the places we ended up where we cut our fencing a little too short so we had to block in the area over here where the fencing was too short for the wall on that side and then we had to add some blocks of wood on this side for the same reason just to help kind of seal it in a little bit better um, we've got our, our wood blocked in at the top it wasn't a perfect fit um, it was just some old scrap tongue and groove boards we had left over so there's probably a quarter inch gap at the top and the bottom but when we were building this I think our goal was to really just shoot for we really didn't want any holes bigger than a half of an inch um, so I can barely kind of get my fingertips in here at the top of the door and I think that's pretty good I think as long as we can keep the openings down to an inch or smaller we're probably pretty good and it's pretty secure for chickens so today it's actually a nice day outside. It's going to get up to about 40 degrees. So I don't really want to waste the rest of the day. I'm glad that I am done with the brooder. So it may be a little hard for you guys to see how this ended up turning out, but I'm pretty happy. We put the tongue and groove boards on the front, and that was really to kind of match the other side of the barn because the other side of the barn had the tongue and groove on it as well. So I think it all pretty well goes together. And uh, now I'm just going to go ahead. i got to get all my tools cleaned up and move on to the next project. So, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.